Can your personal identity be identified solely through your motion data in VR? So, uh, apparently, yes, to some extent, and depending on what character traits are being looked at and how much motion data is being investigated, but yes. So I found the, after reading an article about this sort of thing, I found the two papers that were cited and it's actually quite interesting. So this is the first paper, 17 February, 2023, unique identification of 50,000 plus virtual reality users from head and hand motion data. So you have to remember these research papers are not talking about collecting data, looking at your face or your features. Uh, they're using basically things like MetaQuest, uh, MetaQuest 2, um, not facial data. This is purely deducted from head and hand motion data. So you've got this first study and it says, in this study we show that a large number of real VR users, and they've got 55, a sample set of 55,541 can be uniquely and reliably identified across multiple sessions using just their head and hand motion relative to virtual objects. Here's where it gets interesting. After training a classification model on five minutes of data per person, a user can be uniquely identified among the entire pool of 50,000 plus with 94.33% accuracy from 100 seconds of motion and with 73% 73.2 accuracy from just 10 seconds of motion. So where did they get their motion data for those 55,000 users? They got it from BeatLeader. BeatLeader, I'm sorry. So BeatLeader is an open source Beat Saber extension, maintains third party leaderboards with over 100,000 custom Beat Saber maps. Beat Saber players may choose to install the Beat Leader extension in order to compete with other players. So basically, since May 2022, over 50,000 users have posted over 2.5 million scores to the Beat Leader platform. When uploading a score to Beat Leader, a recording or replay of the user's performance is automatically captured by the Beat Leader extension. So the data set for the study is essentially the Beat Leader replays, motion replays of, of users who have been using the extension. In partnership with the administration of BeatLeader, we obtained a 3.96 terabyte data set contain, consisting of 2 million, over 2,650,000 replays from more than 55,000 users across 713,000 separate PlayStations. So the data set has between 1 and 4,009 replays per user, which means somebody out there has recorded 4,509 replays. I'm pretty sure they're in perfect health by now, with a median of 14 replays per user. The replays range in length from 5 seconds, quick fail, to over an hour, with a median length of 2 minutes and 56 seconds. Even with a single sample generated from just two seconds of data, the correct user out of 50,000 has identified about 48.45% of the time. So even that, just two seconds of data is enough to give them that level of accuracy. Using five samples, that number jumps up to 73%, and using a single minute of data yields 92.78 accuracy and the full 94.33% accuracy that they mentioned earlier is achieved when 50 samples or 100 seconds of data are used with rapidly diminishing returns for each sample thereafter. And this is actually pretty interesting because it goes, it, it starts approaching the data from the other research I'm going to show you now because they start saying that users from certain countries, particularly Japan and South Korea, are significantly easier to identify, implying there may be detectable cultural differences in play style. This result is highly statistically significant with over 99% identification accuracy for users from those two countries. So. Clearly, Japanese and South Korean users really do move differently than, than the other users in this sample, and it's so different that it, that, that it provides over 99% identification accuracy. I think that's pretty incredible. So that's one paper, but you know, again, this, this sort of stuff is interesting in the sense that it can identify users, but 
The other paper, which we're going to look at now, this one, uh, which is in, which was published very ago, June 10th of June 2023, pretty recently, a couple of months ago, inferring personal private personal attributes of virtual reality users from head and hand motion data. This one is actually about identifying personal traits of people um, from their movement data. So this is this is pretty insane because. Um, okay, again, the use beat leader, you can see that, and vServe, uh, um, this is the information that they collected from users that they could train um, the, their software on, the machine learning software on, so they asked, uh, you know, about their uh, demographics, specifications, background, health, habits, environment, anthropometrics, and clothing, and, but, okay, here's where it gets absolutely amazing. Using motion data, they were able to reach an accuracy level of 81.7% for when it comes to identifying the country of the user. So just by your motion alone, they can predict your country um, with an accuracy of 81.7%. 81.7%. They can predict your marital status, whether you're single or married, by, to an accuracy of 73.3% which is statistically significant. This is not a random guess. They are actually detecting something about your motion. Uh, the software is detecting something about your motion that tells it whether you're single or married. So apparently single people move differently than married people, which in and of itself I find pretty fascinating. They can detect your employment status to 71.7% uh, accuracy. Your ethnicity to 70% levels of accuracy. They can detect your income to 68.8% levels of accuracy, which considering the variations in income levels, this is pretty damn impressive. They can even detect your substance use to within 64% accuracy. They can detect your language to 65% accuracy, which I suppose could be said, you know, it's a function of your country and ethnicity, so it's not that odd, but still, some of these are pretty amazing. The fact, you know, for me, it's amazing that they can detect your marital status, employment status, and ethnicity to almost 70 to 73% accuracy. Just, again, remember, just based on motion data, just based on how you're moving yourself, how you're moving your body, your hands, your head. Well, basically, it's your hands and your head, and what it, you know, whatever it can conclude from that about the rest of your motion. But I think this is pretty insane. And there you go, there's a bit of the end with the discussion where we're saying, despite the inherent difficulty of this data set, a large number of personal attributes were accurately and consistently inferable from the XR motion data alone. The attributes go beyond the obvious anthropometric measurements to include a surprising amount of information about the player's background, demographics, environment, habits, and even health. Many of these attributes, such as disability status, could be considered highly private information by end users. Others, like political orientation, have historically been used by social media platforms for targeted advertising and could simply leave VR users open to targeted influence campaigns. You have to remember, we're, we're still early in the game. New headsets are going to have a lot more trackable things, a lot more trackable biometrics that they can measure. You know, you've got stuff like you know, uh, your, your Vision Pro, you've got stuff like your Quest Free, you've got stuff like, you know, all the stuff that's coming up with facial tracking, motion tracking, so I'm, these numbers are only going to get higher is what I'm trying to say. These accuracy numbers that you're seeing, they are only going to get higher. And I think that's pretty amazing. I mean, there are privacy concerns, clearly, which is maybe the biggest takeaway from all this. Um, but there you go, I suppose it's like most tech these days, it's a little bit double-edged. Uh, a lot of it can be used uh, to give you, you know, you know user interface uh, facility, like instead of having to click which user you are in your family, you could probably put on a headset and just by, you know, you moving for like the first two or 10 seconds, it, it will probably be able to automatically conclude which family member you are and tailor the interface accordingly with your favorites and your favorite games or your say load up your saved games or whatever. So there are things like that where you can easily see how it'll facilitate, you know, user interaction. But at the same time, uh, yeah, it's definitely going to raise privacy concerns for, for all these metrics that can be deduced just from your motion data. 
anyway, I I saw this I saw these two research papers after I saw an article mentioning them, and I wanted to look through them and see what exactly is going on because I I thought it was pretty interesting, and uh, I thought some of our viewers would be interested in looking at this, you know, taking a look at it and seeing what's uh, what there is already uh, and what might be coming around the corner. So. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I'm pretty sure if you didn't, you clicked away right at the start of the video because you're basically looking at research papers and hearing my voice. Uh, but I thought it was pretty fascinating. And uh, we'll be back with our uh, reviews and uh, first impressions of uh, many, many VR games pretty soon. Have a wonderful day. Remember to like this video if you found it at all interesting, share it if you think it's cool, and subscribe if you want more from our channel. I promise you, we don't generally talk about research papers. I really just thought this one was pretty interesting. Have a great day. Bye-bye.